I came to the to the concept of race through the first book that I wrote, uh, The Warm Feather Sons, in which I was writing about the uh, the flight of, of six million African Americans who were uh, escaping the Jim Crow South, and in writing about what they had endured, writing about what the Jim Crow South was actually like, a lot of Americans. I have not really gotten that true exposure to what it was like to live in that world where everything that you could do or could not do was based upon what you look like, that it was actually against the law for a black person and a white person to play checkers together. So I was recreating that world and and, and, and recreating that world. I did not use the word racism because it did not seem sufficient to capture the totality of the and the comprehensive nature of the control restrictions and boundaries. So that calls upon us to think about, well, what does caste mean? What is caste? So caste system essentially is an arbitrary uh, grading, an artificial grading, graded ranking of, of human value in a society. And it's one in which uh, there's a, a, a fixed uh, infrastructure that in our country predates anyone who's alive today. It goes all the way back to uh, colonial times when the when the country was being formed. And a caste system essentially deter determines one's standing, the respect accorded a person, the benefit of the doubt, uh, access to resources, or the deprivation of, the, of access to those resources, even such things as assumptions of competence and beauty. So these are the, this is the hierarchy that we have all inherited, that no one alive created, but we have inherited it, and we live under the shadow of that, uh, of that system. You also write about what you call the middle caste of Asians, Latinos, indigenous people, and new immigrants from, of African descent, who you say navigate within what began as a bipolar hierarchy. I'm, I'm wondering if you could explain that and also why you chose to include indigenous people uh, uh, in the middle caste when some would argue that Certainly in the United States and certainly in Latin America, there has been a long existing caste system toward the native peoples, whether it's in Peru, Bolivia, Ecuador, uh, Mexico, and, uh, and of course in the United States. The caste system, uh, as I'm describing it, uh, we have to go back to where it began. It began with the, the creation of a country which, in which uh, the people who were the colonists who were British uh, placed themselves uh, obviously at the top of the hierarchy and then imported, brought people in from, from Africa uh, to be the enslaved people who would automatically, by definition, be at the very bottom of the caste system, having no rights whatsoever, not even rights over their own bodies. And so there also were, of course, the indigenous people who were the, 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 the first nations of this, of this land, who then were in some ways uh, ex exiled from the caste system that was being created as, as in a bipolar or caste system. So in many ways, respects, and I also say that they are uh, in some ways outside, forced to be outside of the caste system in the ways that the colonists devised it by forcing them off of their land. The bipolar caste system uh, is meant that there were basically two main groups that were the, uh, the foundation uh, as the, that the country created. And then anyone entering this bipolar uh, caste system then had to figure out where did they fit in, had to somehow navigate what had been created as as a two-tiered system, and uh, the, 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 uh, the infrastructure that had been created had to also decide, you know, ask, actually uh, assigned people to roles on the basis primarily of what they look like and what their uh, lineage might have been, what part of the world they come from. So uh, when people were arriving, say, from, from Europe, they were not, uh, from outside of, of, of uh, Northern Europe, they were not necessarily thinking of themselves as white. They, the white was not um, a label that had been applied uh, or needed to be applied, I should say, to someone who was living in 16th century uh, of what would now be uh, Ireland or uh, Hungary or Poland. In other words, people who were arriving to the United States in the early decades and, and even century of, the, of, of history uh, in the United States were not arriving as white people in their minds. They were arriving as Irish or Polish or Hungarian. Upon arrival, though, they were assigned to the category, essentially a new category. The idea of race is a fairly new one, going back only about 500 years, race as we currently know it. So they had to then navigate and readjust their identi identity 
in order to meet, to meet the expectations of this caste system that they were entering. And so did other people who were coming from other parts of the world. The United States uh, in the uh, late 19th century and early 20th century went to a great deal of trouble to curate its population, particularly those who uh, were not coming from Northern Europe. And so anyone coming from outside of Northern Europe then had to be fit into this caste system. And that meant that there was a tremendous amount of, of, uh, of uh, uh, dis, uh, dissolution and a tremendous amount of, of restlessness about trying to figure out who would fit. So there, was, uh, there were a lot of legal challenges uh, of people coming from, from Asia, people coming from other parts of the world to petition for the, for the recognition of citizenship, petition ultimately for the recognition of being able to fit into what was the category of the dominant caste which would have been uh, white or Caucasian at that time. And so this is uh, a work in progress, has always been a work in progress.